beautiful day. It's Quayside Inn over there, New Westminster, British Columbia, Canada. We're checking out the 2022 version of the Surface 604 Rook. And we also have the Colt over here. These are basically the same bike, like the same motor, same battery, even though I've got two different batteries here to show you, two different capacities. And then each one comes in two different frame sizes. So we got the small, medium here on the step through more approachable Rook. This one comes in black or white. Whereas the Colt, I think this one's just in black. $24.99 for these, pretty good price point in my opinion. Um, prices have gone up a little bit over time, but there are a few uh, improvements to the bike, which I wanna point out just straight away. Nice swept back handlebar, a little bit more relaxed than before. I love that they're still doing the adjustable angle uh, stem because that gives you just a range of fit options in addition to the frame size. So again, for me, the value there, having a couple different frame sizes, some colors, and then so much adjustability, it's really great. Ergonomic grips, nice upgraded saddle here. This is the Ascenza Selly Royale, 30.4 millimeters on that seat post. So you can get like a suspension post, but you know, I'm starting out here with the Rook because it is so approachable. If you get one of those suspension posts, you're gonna raise the minimum saddle height by a few inches. Both of the bikes come with a nice suspension fork here. It's a little bit basic. It's just like a spring suspension, but it does have lockout here. So you can reduce that bobbing feeling if you're wanting to be really efficient. And then there's preload over there. So you can preload the spring if you're someone who weighs a little bit more. I also feel like these tires are doing an excellent job. I mean, you can see they've got this reflective sidewall stripe, which is wonderful for safety. They've got some puncture protection and then they're a little bit wider. So this is 27.5 by 2.4. So they're taller, a little bit wider. That's gonna give you some stability, some traction and comfort just because there's that higher air volume. Okay, other things that make this bike really special and unique, in my opinion, is that it has hydraulic disc brakes. And at this price point, that's really nice to see. It also has motor inhibitors on both of the brake levers that activate blinking mode on the rear light. Very cool, just helps to keep you safe along with those reflective sidewalls. 180 millimeter rotors, front and rear, gotta love that. Perfect positioning on that kickstand, adjustable length, and even the crank arms are kind of special. I think this is like Samix, but they've got them branded Surface 604. I love the Welgo pedals, extra wide, stiff, black. Everything matches on these bikes. Like really, really nice. You can see the hub, the spokes, the rims, and then check it out, hollow spindle. So it's a little bit lighter, but still very stiff and compliant because it's a little bit of a wider diameter. Steel chain ring, 42 teeth on that. And then if we come back here, we've got Shimano Alivio or possibly SRAM X5, depending on inventory, you know, supply chain stuff. But they're, they're doing a great job uh, maneuvering that, in my opinion. 11 to 32 teeth, nine speeds. So plenty of gear choices. The, the spread is a little bit limited. You know, 32, it'd be nice to see 36 or 42 or something. But then again, this is sort of a relaxed around town bike. It's not really a mountain bike. The story on Surface 604 is that here in sort of the greater Vancouver area of Canada, uh, the 604, that's like phone numbers. So it'd be like 604, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that kind of thing. So Surface 604, we've got the sea, like the ocean. We got mountains, There's, you can see way out there, there's like snow-capped peaks. Uh, and then there's, there's forests, there's like mountain biking and stuff. So their bikes, they have sort of this mountain biking background or heritage and, and they try to use higher quality parts. And so for me, that, that hollow spindle is one of those. I like that they've got bottle cage bosses down here, even if it's not the most convenient thing to reach. It, it, maybe up here would work, but then, you know, if you jump off the bike, you don't want to bump into that. So this could be used for like a folding lock or something, like a little accessory. And then back here, we've got a frame integrated rear rack. And this thing is done really, really well. So it's paint matched. We've got bungee loops at the bottom. And then we've got pannier hangers on the side. So you can connect the panniers right here without crowding that top platform, which can be used for like a trunk bag or maybe a... Uh, maybe like a child seat or something like that. And then it doubles as a mounting point for this rear light. This bike weighs about 62 pounds, whereas the high step is 58. So interestingly, it's actually lighter for the high step because I don't think they have to reinforce the frame quite as much. So the high steps tend to be a little bit more rigid, easier to, to pick up from the center. That surprised me. So this battery pack right here, this is the standard pack, 672 watt hours. It's a 48 volt pack. 
And then you can upgrade and get the Ray engine that kind of spills out the side a little bit. This is 960 watt hours. So higher capacity, you pay a little bit more and they have an optional fast charger. It's four amps versus the standard two amp. Fairly lightweight here. Both of them are, you know, take up a little bit of space, but I love that the wall side unplugs. And if you get the higher capacity battery, you know, it's nice to get the extra charger, but this stuff does add up and it kind of spills out to the side a little bit. You can see right there, both of them have a charging port built in. So it's like a five volt, I think 500 milliamp standard USB type A. You know, it's, it's okay and it could be used to charge portable electronics like on the go. Maybe you're camping or something, you take the battery off of this thing. But I love that they've got another USB charging port built into the base of the display right here. Really, really reachable, much more usable in my opinion if you're gonna have like a phone or a light or something like that. So for me, it's really cool to see almost like redundancy. And I'm always taking my batteries off of the bikes when I charge them because, you know, it's, it's nice to keep them away from extreme heat or extreme cold. Pretty easy, you just twist that like that, take it off. 7.7 .7 pounds for this one. This is the stock battery. Again, 48 volts, 14 amp hours. Charge it on or off the bike. It's gonna reduce the weight of the bike a little bit. And I believe that the motor weighs about seven and a half, eight pounds as well. This is a Bafang planetary geared hub motor. Again, black with the black spokes and the rims and everything. It's rated pretty powerfully, okay? So this is like 500 watt nominal, maybe 750 peak, 45 Newton meters of torque is what they say. And it actually performs pretty well, kind of dynamically, because they're using a torque sensor instead of cadence. A lot of times the more affordable bikes have a little cadence sensor up here, and that's fine, but it's more of an on off kind of thing. Like, are you pedaling? On. Did you stop? Off. Whereas a torque sensor, it's measuring like how hard are you pedaling? Do you really need the power now? Are you pushing hard? Okay, we'll respond. So it's got kind of like a metal plate right here. It's like a TMM4 type of a torque sensor. Interesting to see that. That's one of the things that, again, differentiates this bike a little bit in addition to the lights and stuff. So let's see if we if we missed anything here. Just looking at the bike, uh, you know, maybe the fenders, I wanna call that out. These are aluminum alloy. They're fairly sturdy. They're not gonna bounce around a whole lot. They are connected to the lowers on the front fork by these plastic cuffs, which is a bit of a trade-off. Be nice if they mounted directly, like if there were threaded eyelets on the fork. These plastic cuffs can move around a little bit, but given how sturdy these are, and I, I love that the stays don't stick out, that they're not gonna poke you or anything, they're really nice looking. They give you pretty good coverage, 65 millimeter width on those. Given that the bikes are all black, again, I, the safety thing for me is such a big deal, and it looks like this is a little bit reflective on the plastic chain cover. No plastic sticker, like slap guard here. Quick disconnects for the cables in the rear, 12 millimeter slotted axle with nuts. And, and I like that the, the power cable, it doesn't look like it's coming out a whole lot. It's not like really exposed, like it, caught on something. Sometimes I complain about this because there are newer designs where this is tucked in even closer, like between the disc brake and the left chain stay. So it's okay. You know, you can do like a derail your guard, but maybe that's not necessary. This is, this is pretty tight. And in the front, we've got quick release, nine millimeter axle, quick release gear. So it's easier to take off. Keep in mind, if you do take off that front wheel, you still have the fender. Okay. And that, so packing this in your car, laying the handle down flat, it's it's not gonna be quite as easy. Um, so yeah, I don't know, it's just, just something I think about in terms of transporting these. For me, one of the really great highlights are these lights. I think these are like a German company, Bouchelle. And this one has side windows in addition to front pointing. And look at where it's mounted. In the past, this was down here on the arch of the suspension. And that was okay, but you know, much rather have light up high to keep you visible. And of course it points where you steer. And as you're riding, you could adjust this a little bit, try to aim it better. So for me, that's a big improvement. It's not gonna rattle around a whole lot down here. That was one of the big upgrades. So again, between the swept back handlebars, the ergonomic grips and everything, and then the saddle upgrade, and then the continued refinement of like the fenders and everything. I, I feel like these are, these are pretty special bikes. Okay, so to activate the display, we just press this power button for a couple seconds. Surface 604 readout, gotta love that. 
boots up fairly quickly. And then we've got a battery percentage at the top. I love that. It's just very precise and you can switch that to voltage if you want. Then we have current speed. It's in kilometers, but we can switch that to miles in the settings later. And then there's this little readout here, kind of like in a car. You can know how fast you're going, how much power you're using. It starts in assist level one and that means the throttle is hot. So just keep that in mind. If you want, you can go down to zero and then the throttle is kind of shut off. In any level of assist, you can do walk mode, which you hold the minus key here for just a second. There's a little icon on the display that comes on too, a little guy walking the bike. This is handy given that, you know, both of the bikes are kind of the high 50s, low 60s. That's a, that's a lot, and especially if you're on technical terrain or maybe you've got a child seat or something. You just want to get that bike moving itself so you can focus on other things. I like that they've got walk mode in here. And then there's five levels of assist. So we can press the plus button over here and go to one, two, three, four, or five. And there's actually more to that, and I'll show you in a second. Then we got trip distance, uh, odometer, and if we press the I button, it's gonna cycle through to max speed, average speed, time, we're back to odometer. So a lot of good readouts here. Really appreciate the way this button pad works. Very clicky and tactile. Rubber for these other dedicated buttons. It's nice that you don't have to memorize some special combination to get the headlights on. You just hold that for a couple seconds and then there's a little icon right there. In the past, the display used to go dim if you were activating the lights, which I kind of like. It doesn't get rid of your night vision. But on the other hand, if you're using the, night, the lights during the daytime, that was problematic because you still want to be able to see in bright sun. So they've left the display alone now. The lights will come on. And again, I love how the headlights got that side cut out. The rear, we got two LEDs, so it's extra bright. And when you pull the brake lever, we've got blinking, so you're gonna be extra visible. It's not blocked by the rack or anything. Really good job all around. And yeah, the motor inhibitors and stuff that I mentioned before too. So you're just really covered on, on multiple fronts. To get to the fun, interesting stuff, we hold the plus and minus keys for a couple seconds and we've got display settings. So we're gonna press the I button and we could adjust from metric to imperial. The backlight brightness, that's what I was talking about. So it's like, we're at 100% right now to make it easy to see during the daytime. And it's gonna stay at 100% if we activate the lights. And they did that on purpose so that people could use them during the daytime. And then there's dormancy, five minutes, state of charge, percentage, or we can do voltage, trip reset, sensitivity, assist levels, zero to five. This is the other really cool thing. So if you want, you could change this to like zero through three or zero through nine, zero through six. There's lots and lots of options. I'm, I'm okay with zero to five, so you don't have to click tons of times, but it is nice you could have those finer controls over how much power you're getting. And then password, back, advanced settings. We can change the wheel size, speed limit. You can adjust this. You can actually take it down if you wanna conserve power or just feel safer. I think you can even dial it up a little bit. You might be able to go 25, 26 miles per hour for off-road use. And you might need the password to do that. I'm, I'm not really messing with it here, but I wanna call that out. Feels like they give you lots of options on this bike. Uh, again, whether it's the frame size or speed, the lights. I love that they've got that custom bracket here, fairly sturdy. You can, you can adjust the, the light up and down while you're riding to really dial it in. Safety wise, I, you know, I'm very impressed. And I was remembering, you know, with the torque sensors, they are pretty dynamic, but there are times where I've, I've ridden across bumpy terrain or maybe down steps and watch the chain there. See, it kind of bounces around and it can make contact with that right stay, but it's also gonna add some strain to that TMM4 torque sensor right there, that metal plate. And that can activate the motor unexpectedly. You're like, whoa, I wasn't pedaling. That's the trade-off with the torque sensor. If that's happening and you're, you're trying to ride like technical terrain, you don't want it to, to go off, you can just pull the brakes a little bit, activate that motor inhibitor, and then the motor, the motor won't come on. Or you can arrow down to assist level zero. And I wanted to give you a close up on the chargers one more time here. So there it is, that's the four amp charger, a little bit bigger, and then the two amp, fairly lightweight, like 1.7 pounds, can unplug the wall side and then that, that larger battery there. Okay, I think it's time to go for a ride. Okay, let's go ahead and stow the kickstand, hop on this thing. Even though it's the step through, I have the habit of swinging my leg around the back. Be careful though, I've bumped my shins a number of times and it can be a, be a little bit uncomfortable. I'm gonna walk my way over here to the bike, bike route and then just pedal gently. 
even in the highest level of assist, see, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting overwhelmed because it's a torque sensor. But as soon as I press it, it just takes off. It's also fairly responsive. You know, I, I don't feel like it continues to surge after I stop pedaling. And that's one of the benefits of a torque sensor. Let's try out that throttle here. So we'll just feather it a little bit and we get a little bit of power. You can see it surging there on the display. And then we get full power. Nice. Very comfortable, very stable tracking. I attribute that to the wider tires that they've got on this thing. Yeah, it's really comfortable. I, I like the uh, suspension on most of my bikes. And this one's feeling, feeling pretty comfortable. Maybe go off the curb and see how those fenders sound. There we go. Very quiet. That upright body position. This one is the small, medium frame size. I'm about 5'9", and it feels good. I might raise the saddle just a little bit to get more leg extension, but I, I think I'm kind of between sizes. I could go either way. To be honest though, from a comfort standpoint, this one has shorter reach for me. The approachability of the frame. I, I, I love that this comes in two frame sizes. This would probably be my personal choice uh, between the two. And then the shifting mechanism up here, we have like a multi-shift on the low. So if we go to the high, you, you do have to use your pointer finger here. Some some of the shifters like Dior level, you can use your thumb for both. This one, it's, it's trigger, pull in like that, and then one, two, three. So you can really drop the gears. I like that. And the optical display, the readout's pretty pretty nice. Even though there's a lot of wires and stuff up here, it's, it's all pretty well done. Okay, so I've got it in assist level one, but the cool thing is the throttle gives you full power. So I can be like efficient pedaling and then zip up to speed, catch my friends. So I want to just start out with the throttle, no pedaling, no problem. but that's actually the kickstand. The fenders feel, feel really good. Let's shift some gears here. Very nice. Found a shady section, so I thought it'd be nice to show you what the display looks like here. It's pretty easy to see, and the way this bike is set up, um, I find that, you know, having having full throttle power, even on the lowest levels of assist, I can always zip up to catch my friends or climb that hill. And then I'm back down to the more efficient, more energy saving sort of levels. I tend to ride in like two or three. Well guys, it was a beautiful day here in New West in Canada. I hope you had fun checking out this bike. And I hope I covered everything you might've been wondering, but I do record all the stats and stuff back at electricbikereview.com. There's a nice comparison tool. So you could look at the Rook and the Colt back to back, or you could go year over year, or maybe compare it to some of the other bikes in that like mid 2000 price range. I also have some forums and stuff back at the site. So if you wanna see what an actual owner thinks or someone who's ridden it for more than just a couple days, check that out. They might have some tips about accessories and stuff. Um, there's so many things you can do now with electric bikes. And a bike like this, to me, it's kind of a do everything, whether you're going grocery shopping or hanging out with the kids or maybe going a little bit off road, kind of light. You can handle it with these tires, with the suspension. Uh, it's good stuff. So I love you guys. Ride safe out there. Have fun. We'll see you next time.